when the multiverse of animatronics collapses, they are sent to different parallel realities and spread into the cartoon world to terrorize your favorite characters. Today we're going to recap the stories of Five Nights at Freddy's in the cartoon universe. April works at Alberto's Pizza as a party entertainer and the last events she attended were a fiasco. To prove to her boss that she deserves to keep her job, the girl will have to make Jimmy's birthday a huge success. Later, during Alberto and his band's concert, the birthday boy decides to throw a glass of juice at the singer and causes a short circuit in the robotic bear. Then the children start a riot and April becomes desperate. She immediately contacts Donatello for help and informs him that Alberto the bear was destroyed before he could even sing happy birthday to Jimmy. To help her sort out this mess, the Ninja Turtles say they're on their way and arrive on the scene the next minute. While Donatello fixes the bear, his brothers try to distract the children, who are making a huge mess in the pizzeria. Not satisfied with just fixing Alberto, Donatello decides to make some changes so that the children will like him better. When the band takes to the stage, April gathers the children again to watch the show and, this time, everyone is impressed by the performance of the robot guitarist. However, during the song, the bear's electrical system begins to malfunction and, after exploding, it stops working. The wave of energy emitted by his body is so great that it causes a short circuit in the pizzeria's electrical system and all the lights go out. In an attempt to save the party, April gets up on stage and starts singing happy birthday to the birthday boy. Suddenly, however, Alberto rises up with a frightening appearance and begins to terrorize the children. Seeing his creation attacking people, Donatello uses the remote control to try to stop it, but he can't control the creature. To keep the children safe, April escorts them to the door and asks them to run away. Just then, the young woman is surrounded by the evil robot and is about to be attacked when Raphael appears and knocks the enemy out with one punch. But then the bear gets up to continue the battle, so the Ninja Turtles must band together to defeat him. After bringing the other robots back to life, Alberto manages to recruit new villains for his team and turns all the toys in the pizzeria into his allies. Realizing that Jimmy is in danger, April rushes to save him while her four friends try to destroy the evil robots. With the boys' help, the party entertainer destroys all the moles that try to attack them, but a new army appears to take revenge. Concerned for the boys' safety, she traps Jimmy and another guest inside the stuffed animal machine and ends up being attacked. Meanwhile, Michelangelo fights President Pepperoni and, after distracting him with a shower of balls, the turtle manages to capture the monster with a rope. Unlike his brother, Donatello is getting hard attacked by the cherry tomato until he manages to capture it with his mechanical arms and uses an electric pulse to destroy it. While trying to stop Alberto with his sword, Leonardo is defeated and Raphael has to act so that his brother doesn't end up being eliminated. However, his punches don't do any damage to the robot, which manages to defeat the three Ninja Turtles with ease. Donatello is the only one still able to fight and he uses a birthday cake to distract Alberto. While the turtles sing happy birthday to the robot, April uses a hammer to hit its head and manages to destroy the enemy. At the end of the battle, the walls of the pizzeria collapse and the four brothers decide to flee so as not to be held responsible. So April has to face her boss alone and, of course, ends up being fired by him. During an afternoon with his friends, Shaggy decides to take them to see the Pizza Possum Emporium, the place where he spent the most fun times of his childhood. As well as pizza, the place has lots of games and prizes, all of which Velma hates the most, as she was a video game fanatic for a long time when she was younger. The biggest prize of all is the pizza dog and Shaggy reveals that, as a child, he spent several years trying to win it, but never had enough tickets to get the required score. Just then, Grandpa Gary shows up and reveals that those youngsters are in luck, as the place has had very little competition lately. Ever since the toys started malfunctioning, the children stopped going to the Emporium because they were being attacked by robots. For several years, the pizza skunk was the favorite puppet of young people, but over time he lost his appeal and the public stopped going to see him. Because of this, Grandpa Gary had no choice but to deactivate the animatronic mascot and keep it in storage. One day, however, the robot came to life and went out to seek revenge on the public who no longer liked him. Since then, the doll has been on the loose terrorizing children. When he learns that the person who solves this mystery will win the pizza dog as a gift, Shaggy doesn't think twice before joining his team of detectives to carry out an investigation. However, before starting work, Shaggy and Scooby decide to have a pizza, but discover that the food can only be exchanged for tickets. Conveniently, the pair spot some tickets scattered on the floor and rush to pick them up. Just then, the animatronic possum appears and starts chasing the two friends. After losing the creature at a supposed birthday party, Shaggy and Scooby take the opportunity to escape. Meanwhile, the rest of the team pays a visit to the warehouse and comes across lots of scary robot parts. Suddenly, 
Gary appears and advises the youngsters to go back to the arcade before any more robots come to life. While walking around the site, the trio come across a ball pool and notice something moving inside. Immediately, Fred approaches to find out who is hiding and finds Shaggy and Scooby terrified after escaping from the pizza possum. To attract the monster, Daphne manages to convince her friend to play and, minutes after Velma starts the game, the evil robot appears. When the girl is about to be attacked, her companions capture the monster so that she can hit it with a sledgehammer, but Velma is too distracted by the game and fails to act as agreed. Through her fault, the possum manages to break free and goes after the people who tried to capture him. When Fred is cornered, he tries to hold on to the robot to protect his friends, but he is about to be attacked by the little ones when Velma resets the game and wins 10,000 tickets as a prize. At that moment, the animatronic robot gets distracted and Shaggy has the chance to knock it out with a blow to the head. After tying up the possum, Fred tries to remove his mask to find out who is behind the monster and, in doing so, he discovers that the animal was in fact a robot. However, the creature was not possessed. The truth is that it was controlled by Lydia, who was the first child to claim to have been attacked by animatronic animals. Like Shaggy, Lydia really wanted to win the pizza dog, but she never managed to collect enough tickets. So she learned how to control the pizza possum to keep all her competitors at bay. That way, she had more time to win as many games as possible and collect the points she needed to get her long-awaited prize. After her evil plan was discovered, Lydia was kicked out of the arcade and, as promised, Grandpa Gary delivered the pizza dog to Shaggy. Pop's birthday is just a day away, so Benson decides to get his friends together to choose a present for him. Just then, Pops appears and Muscle Man reveals the real reason for the meeting. Now that he knows his friends are planning to get him a birthday present, Pops decides to make a request. He reveals that all he would like to win is a pair of fuzzy dice from the fun zone. The problem is that the only way to get these dice is to win a million tickets and Pops is not good at games. So, that afternoon, his friends decide to go to the amusement zone in order to get this data. While Rigby defeats his opponents at the arrow hockey table, Mordecai struggles to hit the balls in the skis balls and Skips uses a hammer to hit the moles. On the other side of the arcade, Muscle Man and Ghost are having fun on the dance floor and, after a long afternoon of games, the group manages to collect a huge amount of tickets. However, there are still 20,000 units left and they only have one token to get them. So Benson decides to use it in the skis balls machine, as he realizes that this game gives out more tickets than all the others. To increase the team's chance of success, they decide to form a queue so that everyone has a chance to throw the balls and, 20 minutes later, they manage to collect all the tickets they need. After getting the fuzzy dice, Benson and his friends can finally go home. Just then, an animatronic bear appears and steals the dice. Then the thief and his gang of robots get into a red convertible and speed off. Immediately, the six friends climb into a golf cart to chase after them and, as they approach the vehicle, Muscle Man tries to catch them. At this point, he is almost hit by a truck, but Skips manages to save his friend and then the team continues the chase. To catch up with the robots, they invade private property. During the escape, the bear realizes that his car's brakes aren't working and ends up having an accident. The smoke attracts Mordecai's attention and the group soon manages to find the thieves who stole Parolito's pair of dice when asked why they wanted the dice. One of the criminals reveals that 10 years ago they robbed a jewelry store and made off with millions of dollars in rough diamonds. To hide these precious stones, the robbers stuck diamonds in the dice. After hearing this story, Muscle Man manages to steal the dice and throw it at his friends. Just then, dozens of FBI agents show up and start exchanging fire with the criminals. During this exchange of fire, the six friends hide inside the golf cart and see the three robots being brutally destroyed by the agents. After the FBI recovered the diamonds stolen by the gang, Benson and the rest of the group recovered the dice and were able to give Pops the birthday present he so desperately wanted. After a long day at the gift store, Sus Ramirez returns home to find that his cousin is getting married next month. When he receives this news, he is surprised, as he didn't even know that Reddy was engaged. That night, his grandmother asks Seuss to find a girl to take to the wedding, as the old lady wants her grandson to find a partner before she perishes. The next day, while at work, the man spots a beautiful young woman and slowly approaches her to talk to her. However, even though he is careful when introducing himself, he ends up scaring the woman, who flees the establishment. When she finds out that Seuss is looking for a girlfriend, Mabel decides to help him and takes her friend to the mall, where he will have a huge variety of women to flirt with. Meanwhile, Stanley discovers that there is an arcade in the mall and decides to go in to find out why the kids like it so much. At that moment, the old man spots an animatronic badger and tries to buy it, but the clerk tells him that the robot is not for sale. After several disastrous attempts, 
Seuss gives up trying to find a girlfriend and sees his cousin Reddy walking with his fiancée through the mall. Embarrassed, the man hides inside a video game store and decides to take home a new game. That night, Seuss meets Jiffany, the main character in the game, and starts talking to her as if she were a real girl. The two quickly come to the conclusion that they are dating and Seuss doesn't even realize that his video game isn't plugged in. The next day, for the first time, the man misses work and leaves Stanley worried. To find out what happened to their friend, Mabel and Dipper decide to go and visit him and discover that he has spent the last 13 hours in front of the TV screen. At that moment, the two brothers drag Seuss out of the room against his will and Jiffany uses the city's power cables to go after them. When he arrives at the mall and is confronted with a large number of real girls, Seuss' brain collapses and he decides to run away. While hiding in an electronics store, he meets Jiffany and discovers that she is no ordinary game. Every time a programmer has tried to delete her, the character has managed to get rid of him and says that she will stay by Sue's side forever. Despite finding this conversation suspicious, the man is happy to finally have a girlfriend and accompanies her to the arcade. There, he meets Melody and they discover that they have a lot in common. After a brief conversation, they arrange to meet at his favorite restaurant that evening. When the girl leaves, Mabel and Dipper congratulate their friend on getting a date and convince him to return Jiffany to the video game store. That night, Seuss tries to explain to her that he needs to end his relationship with her, but Jiffany gets very angry. Scared, Seuss takes the DVD out of his video game and takes it to the mall, because he's late for his date with Melody. During dinner, he sees Jiffany's image on the restaurant's big screen and runs to his friends for help. At this point, the trio ends up being surrounded by the character and Seuss realizes that she can move freely through any electronic device. Concerned for Melody's safety, he sits down next to her again and tries to persuade her to leave, but is interrupted by the animatronic show. Suddenly, Jiffany invades the body of a robot member of the band and sends the other robots that are scattered around the restaurant to capture her boyfriend. Realizing that his friends are in danger because of him, Seuss decides to separate from them and distracts Jiffany so that Melody and the two brothers can escape. However, their plan doesn't go exactly to plan and the evil robots continue to go after the trio. When he finds out that his friends have been captured, Seuss is furious and decides to get rid of Jiffany once and for all. He then takes the DVD that was in his pocket and throws it into the oven. In doing so, the character is destroyed and all the robots return to being inanimate creatures. Luckily, Melody is still interested in Seuss even after everything that happened that night and agrees to accompany him to his cousin's wedding. So what did you think of this series? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more series recaps. See you next time.